Water is a polar inorganic compound that is by far the most studied chemical compound. It is described as the universal solvent and the solvent of life. It is the most abundant substance on Earth and the only common substance to exist as a solid, liquid, and gas on Earth's surface. Life on Earth began in the ocean, and the conditions in that primeval environment put a permanent stamp on the chemistry of living things. Life, therefore, hinges on the properties of water. Thus, it is of primordial importance that we spend some time in looking at the structural and functional features of water and why it is crucial in biological systems. Water accounts for about 70% of a cell's weight. And most intracellular reactions occur in an aqueous environment. As most of us already know, water is a polar inorganic compound that is composed of two atoms of hydrogen, that are linked together to one atom of oxygen by polar covalent bonds. To continue. The two bonds of a water molecule are highly polar, because the oxygen atom is strongly attractive for electrons, whereas the hydrogen atom is only weakly attractive. Consequently, there is an unequal distribution of electrons in a water molecule, with a preponderance of positive charge on the two hydrogen atoms, and of a negative charge on the oxygen atom. Water molecules form hydrogen bonds with each other and are strongly polar. This polarity allows it to dissociate ions in salts, and bond to other polar substances such as alcohols and acids, thus dissolving them. Its hydrogen bonding causes its many unique properties, such as having a solid form less dense than its liquid form, a relatively high boiling point of 100 degrees Celsius for its molar mass, and high heat capacity. Moving along. In a water molecule, both hydrogen atoms are on the same side of the oxygen atom. As a result, the side of the molecule with the two hydrogen atoms has a slight net positive charge, whereas the other side, the side of the oxygen atom, has a slight net negative charge. Because of this separation of positive and negative charges, the entire molecule has a net dipole moment. Because they are polarized, two adjacent water molecules can form a linkage known as a hydrogen bond. Again these interactions are caused by the electrical attraction when a positively charged region of one water molecule, that is, its hydrogen atoms, comes close to a negatively charged region, that of oxygen, of a second water molecule. Although hydrogen bonding is a relatively weak attraction, compared to the covalent bonds within the water molecule itself, it is responsible for a few of the water's physical properties. These properties include its relatively high melting and boiling point temperature, resulting in more energy required to break the hydrogen bonds between water molecules. The extra bonding between water molecules, also gives liquid water a large specific heat capacity. This high heat capacity makes water a good heat storage medium or coolant and heat shield. Molecules of water are joined together transiently in a hydrogen bonded lattice. Even at 37 degrees centigrade, 15% of water molecules are joined to four others in a short-lived assembly known as a flickering cluster, producing a network in which hydrogen bonds are being continually broken and formed. Again, this cohesive nature of water is responsible for many of its unusual, but biologically important properties, such as high surface tension, specific heat, and heat of vaporization. In comparison, hydrogen bonds have only about 120 the strength of a covalent bond. They are easily broken by the random thermal motions due to the heat energy of the molecules. Water is known as the universal solvent. This is such because of the dipolar structure of the water molecule, which we have just discussed. Therefore, organic molecules possessing ionizable groups or polar functional groups can dissolve in water. In contrast, nonpolar compounds are not soluble and cannot be dissolved in water. We will examine these phenomena when we go to the hydrophilicity and hydrophobicity of different substances. Molecules carrying positive or negative charges, such as ions, interact favorably with water. Likewise, molecules with a lot of functional groups, that are either polar or charged, interact favorably as well. Such molecules are termed hydrophilic, meaning that they are water-loving. A large proportion of the molecules in the aqueous environment of a cell, necessarily fall into this category, including sugars, DNA, RNA, and many proteins. On the other hand, hydrophobic, or water-hating molecules, are uncharged and form few or no hydrogen bonds. Hydrophobic molecules tend to be nonpolar and thus, prefer other neutral molecules and nonpolar solvents. Because water molecules are polar, hydrophobic substances do not dissolve well among them and often cluster together, forming May cells. This property is especially true for most of the hydrocarbons that contain many CH bonds. This property is important in certain biochemical structures like cell membranes and the like. 
one of the simplest kinds of chemical reaction, and one that has profound significance in cells, takes place when a molecule possessing a highly polar covalent bond between a hydrogen and a second atom, dissolves in water. The hydrogen atom in such a molecule has largely given up its electron to the companion atom, and so exists as an almost naked positively charged hydrogen nucleus. In other words, an H-positive ion or just simply a proton. When a polar molecule, in this case, a water molecule, becomes surrounded by water molecules, the proton is attracted to the partial negative charge on the oxygen atom of an adjacent water molecule. This can now dissociate from its original partner, and to associate instead with the oxygen atoms of the water molecule, to generate a hydronium ion or H3O positive. So in simpler terms, water molecules can dissociate to hydrogen ion and hydroxyl ion. Substances that release protons to form hydronium ions or H3O positive ions when they dissolve in water, are termed acids. The higher the concentration of hydronium ion concentration, the more acidic the solution. H3O positive ions are present even in pure water, at a concentration of 10 to the negative 7 molar, as a result of the movement of protons from one water molecule to another. By tradition, the H3O positive ion's concentration is usually referred to as the H positive or hydrogen ion concentration, even though most protons in an aqueous solution is present as H3O positive ions. It should be noted, however, that most acids in the cells are only partially dissociated, and are thus, weakly acidic. On the other hand, the opposite of an acid is a base. Just as the defining property of an acid is that it donates protons to a water molecule, in order to raise the concentration of H3O positive ions, the defining property of a base, is that it raises the concentration of hydroxyl ions or OH negative ions, which are formed by removal of a proton from a water molecule. Thus sodium hydroxide or NaOH is basic or alkaline because it dissociates in aqueous solution to form sodium cations and hydroxyl ions. In the same vein, most bases in biological systems just partially dissociate, and thus are termed weak bases. In chemistry, pH denoting potential of hydrogen or power of hydrogen is a scale used to specify the acidity or basicity of an aqueous solution. Lower pH values correspond to solutions that are more acidic in nature, while higher values correspond to solutions which are more basic or alkaline. At room temperature, pegged at 25 degrees centigrade, pure water is neutral, neither acidic nor basic, and therefore has a pH of 7.0. In biological systems, the inside of the cells is kept close to neutrality but not to pH 7. The pH scale is logarithmic, and inversely indicates the concentration of hydrogen ions in the solution. In other words, a lower pH indicates a higher concentration of hydrogen ions and vice versa. This is because the formula used to calculate pH, approximates the negative of the base 10 logarithm of the molar concentration of hydrogen ions in the solution. This concludes the Biochem Serie episode of the lecture on Introduction to Biochemistry and the Biochemistry of the Cell. Feel free to watch the other Biochem Serie episodes of this lecture as linked below in the description.